Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Nadia Telekonyakova, who is the creator of Pussy Riot. That's the Russian feminist protest art collective that you may recall uh, Nadia was imprisoned back in 2012. Am I correct, Nadia? And this was for the anti-Putin um, demonstration that you had. And now you've been put recently on Russia's most wanted criminal suspects list. Um, that sounds terrifying to me. So let's start with that. I've got so much to talk to you about. But how has that impacted your life being put on that list several weeks ago? Um, it made me want to go even further in uh, my work against the um, authoritarian regime of Vladimir Putin, because to me, it's uh, just another um, sign of his deteriorating mind and power, really, if he goes against artists whose only crime is to say out loud that the emperor is naked and i'm going to double down on my efforts and bring putin's ashes exhibit for which i was put on the most wanted list um to other cities countries i continue pushing for it and i have to say congratulations i know you were just uh pussy right just read the uh 2023 woody guthrie prize so congratulations so i want to clarify because a lot of people think of pussy right as sort of a punk rock band on your Twitter handle alone, you say not a punk rock band. Is that too limiting to you? Because I think that's what we think of because it was that that initially landed you in prison. Um, but we didn't play punk rock. Right. We are a conceptual art collective. And um, so the core members of Pussy Riot, including me, the creator, in, uh, never knew how to play punk rock, mm -hmm. never intended to play it. So we used uh punk rock aesthetics in our art pieces that we created in uh late 2011 early 2012 then we ended up in jail because of one of them um so this uh, piece of art that is a piece of uh, performance and video art um does use aesthetic of punk rock indeed but um we, we are not a punk rock band <laughs> well and you've had a number of you know including uh, Putin's ashes, you've had a number of different sort of protest works that you've done with regard to Russia. I know you also had Ukraine Dow, which I believe raised $7 million in two days for Ukraine. In terms of the work and where you're focused right now, how are you um, expressing the uh, raising awareness of what's going on in Russia? I use art as my weapon in a similar fashion like um, Alexei Navalny and his comrades use investigations and documentary films for <clears throat> making their war against uh, Putin's criminal regime. I use art and um, doesn't matter which genre exactly because being a conceptual artist is really fun and uh, you experience great um, degree of freedom because what matters is the idea and then you can pick any shape or form that you want to um, want to work on next and I usually think of an idea and topic that I um, want to tackle and for example with Ukraine DAO I'm not involved right now in Ukraine DAO I was involved just in the initial the um, NFT effort of uh, raising seven million dollars um, I personally think that the DAO had to be dissolved after that because we fulfilled our mission, we raised the money, and that's it. Um, so my uh, contribution was um, a con contribution of conceptual artists. Um, I asked for simplicity and asked everyone to just focus on something that really matters, Ukrainian flag. And so we symbolically sold the Ukrainian flag for seven million dollars and um, send those money to Ukraine. So there was um, it was an example of how art and conceptual art, art uh, mindset can help you to uh, use art as a tool in political activism. Nadja, so, can I 
uh, this is the way I roll. Yeah, no, I, I and let me ask you about, you know, you've been notably brave and bold on this front. I'm curious about um, the contacts you have in Russia. What is the what is the state of the creative community right now in Russia? And um, I know you're not talking about where, where you are in particular, but um, do you have much of a sense as to whether there's they're able to give voice to any form of protest or different views? Mm -hmm. um, not really. Um, in all my contacts in Russia who are somehow safe, and by safe, I mean just going to jail for a top couple of weeks instead of uh, 20 years. So they um, they don't speak out uh, since the beginning of the war because it became um, literally impossible to speak out against the war um, openly and stay in freedom. Um, everything I hear from my friends or comrades, um, people I know for years from Russia who speak out against the war, and who stay in Russia, unfortunately, I only hear about their imprisonment, such as Vladimir Karamurza, who was just imprisoned for 25 years for condemning Putin's regime and his war, such um, as my friend um, and comrade really for years, Mikhail Krieger, mm -hmm. who um, is, so the prosecutor asked for nine years um, of sentence uh, for, again, criticizing the war in Ukraine. And Mikhail behaves incredibly brave. He um, sang one of the prominent uh, Ukrainian songs from from his cage while he was um, getting um, sentenced and tried. Um, I it, it it really became practically impossible to be vocal against Putin's regime and the war and remain on freedom. And. I want everyone to understand the incredible price that these comrades of mine pay for remaining true to themselves. They were not able to leave for whatever reason. Alexei Navalny decided that he's going to go back because mm -hmm. he believed that politically uh, he has to be with Russian people and they won't listen to him if he's not with them facing the consequences. Um, some people cannot leave for economical reasons or they have relatives they have to take care of or they simply refuse to leave because it's this their country as yeah, well. Yeah, uh, an and entire country. And I remember the courage and heroism of those people who go against the regime. So next time somebody is going to criticize Russian people for not speaking out, you should remember the price that those heroes have to pay every single day being separated from their families, loved ones, losing their health in Russian jail, which is uh, which is a double nightmare. Um, I've, well, I've been there, I know. You, you, you raise a good point because there's been a lot of attention here on Evan uh, Gershkovich, the Wall Street Journal reporter who's been detained and I believe is facing 20 years in prison. You have experienced this yourself, I believe in Siberia, if I'm not mistaken. Well, what was that? Um, yeah, what, yeah, what was that like? like? Really all around. All around. So, what? T t tell us about the experience of being incarcerated in Russia. Mm, so, the main problem of the system that it did not really, it was not reformed since the Gulag times. So, if you read Solzhenitsyn or Shalamov, um, they attitude to human being didn't change since that time. Obviously, um, conditions improved, where the economy is growing, so some things are changing, but basically just changing the color of the wallpaper in a labor camp. Mm. Um, it did people have people are forced to work um, after hours, um, people in my penal colony were forced to work for 16 hours a day with uh, no days off, no weekends, no vacation. And then at the time when you don't work, you have to work again, <laughs> just in a different task, like digging trenches, 
or doing all sorts of really, really ridiculous and pretty much useless activity, which um, which happens when you work under um, under forced labor conditions. Unfortunately, we have to work as prisoners by Russian um, penal law, which um, which is something that I tried to change personally in 2014, 15, but uh, for obvious reasons, <laughs> the Russian parliament didn't listen to me. Um, I don't believe in the 21st century, we should have people being forced to work. Yeah. Um, besides the working conditions, there's also a problem with uh, medical attention. Um, so you basically have Advil giving to you for everything, every condition that you have. And uh, so if you suffer any sort of uh, from any sort of disease or pain, it becomes incredibly difficult to be in jail. So only thing that I can hope for is that Evan is going to be in good health until the moment that he is going to be swapped. I really hope that it's going to happen soon. Let, let me ask you about the conditions under which you're working now as an artist, an activist, also an entrepreneur. I know you've got Unicorn Dow as well. Um, you know, being put on this list, we have seen instances where there have been other people outside of Russia whose lives have been put at risk, if not um, killed. Now, whether that was related to the Russian government, we do not know. But um, how concerned are you for you and your family with regard to just this particular action? I'm not concerned for my safety, just because I prefer not to think about it. Because I believe that fear is something that dictators really know how to work with. They use fear as something that paralyzes your action. But it's my personal choice and you only can require heroism from one person. And this is yourself. Um, when it comes to my family, it's much more difficult for me. Uh, and unfortunately, authoritarian regimes really know how to work, um, how to pressure you through your family. Uh, before. Alexei Navalny um, was put in jail. His younger brother was jailed for three years um, because of Alexei's political activity. And they widely used this type of um, moves to, to convince you to stop, really, and to make you <clears throat> guilty. In my case, um, they do target a couple of people who my loved ones in Russia, it's nothing as serious as a um, prison sentence or, or even criminal case, but they are being incredibly annoying, making searches um, and, and asking people I love to you know, shop in the investigative committee and talk about nature of their relationships with me right now. Um, and obviously, those people cannot give them any real valuable information politically or otherwise. The only reason they do it is just to put psychological pressure on me. No, oh, and some no. of my relatives do not want to leave Russia just because it's their country, it's their yeah. culture, and they refuse to leave because this is something they love and um, they're not going to abandon it just because of Putin. Let me ask you about, um, I'm here in the U.S. and, and the conversation in the U.S. Uh, we just had the Durham report come out, which was talking about, um, you know, potential connections between the, the Trump campaign, to some extent, the Clinton campaign several years ago. How have you found the, the conversation, let's say, you're, whether you're speaking to the creative community or just Americans in general, about how we see Putin? Do you feel like there is an adequate understanding of what's at risk? Some people do understand, some don't really. Um, I just uh, got involved this morning in um, Twitter conversation with uh, someone who praises, really praises Putin and praises Russia as an, an alternative to American, which is um, always um, mm, surprises me. It's uh, it always comes from American leftists or sometimes American far right. Um, and I remember it really struck struck me um, the first time during my conversation with Noam Chomsky, mm. who I greatly adore, and he's really a hero of mine. Otherwise, but years ago 
when Putin just started his invasion in Ukraine, it was um, 2014, I interviewed Noam Chomsky and Professor Chomsky told me that, well, Putin is evil, and I'm not quoting, this is the meaning of what yeah. he told me, that Putin is evil, but America is evil and somebody has to stop, stop it. And I was just like, whoa, 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 wait, you, I, you cannot talk um, in this intellectual abstract terms about amount of suffering, pain, blood, um, deaths that Putin brings to us. And I believe that everyone should just understand and hear our voices that are saying out and loud that Putin is an absolute evil cancer. He's disastrous to our whole planet and he has to be stopped. And you cannot <laughs> really dismiss our sufferings um, by some sort of intellectual, intellectual game of trying to find centers of power, whatever. I'm real and a live person and I went to jail absolutely for nothing. My relatives were poisoned with a nerve agent. My uh, father of my daughter was poisoned with a nerve agent by an actual and very real person who is a war criminal today and he has to be stopped. Was that within Russia or was that poisoning? Did that take place outside of Russia? The nerve agent yeah, poisoning? In, in Moscow. In yeah, Moscow. In Does it make any difference to you, Nadia, uh, whether Donald Trump is in office or not? Because, you know, he is another he is obviously going for the presidential spot again. And um, what difference would it make if he returns to the Oval Office? Um, wouldn't be happy. Um, I made a music video, Make America Great Again, uh, right before Trump was about to be elected. He was running for president at the time. And go see the video to see my attitude towards Trump. I do not love him, um, and no, I, it, um, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be happy if he's going to become a president. I don't know if there's anything else that you want to say in terms of what's on your radar right now. Um, you know, again, I know that it's even the situation in Ukraine. Um, it doesn't look like there's any end in sight, and there continues to be support. But how do you feel about the state of what's going on there? I feel incredibly hopeful for Ukraine. Um, I think each of us should help Ukraine as much as they can. And there is no an action that is too small. And uh, sometimes you feel like you cannot um, help anything if, um, if you're not there or if you don't have a lot of resources, they don't have fame or power, but there is something you can do. And I really hope that the world is going to keep supporting Ukraine uh, with very practical things such as weapons. Um, I'm really afraid of um, the West forgetting about Ukraine or just uh, getting tired and asking for immediate peace negotiations. Uh, I think it's criminal because it was Putin who started this really criminal, unjust, bloody disaster on the territory of Ukraine. He has to leave. He has to give back what he stolen from Ukraine. He has to give back Crimea. Every single territory that is occupied today has to go back to Ukraine. And after that, the war will stop. So, Nadia, tell me about um, what else is coming up on your agenda where people can see you or participate in what Pussy Riot is doing. There is um, Pussy Riot's solo show, Putin's Ashes, is coming up. Uh, it's uh, going to open on June 30th in uh, New Mexico, Santa Fe, in a gallery called Container. There will be also a performance that we want you to join. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you there. And really, the reason why I keep doing it, I keep running around with Putin's ashes because I want to show him and I want to show the whole system, system that supports Putin that I'm not scared and uh, they're not going to be able to easily 
silence mean? Great. I hope people will join join us for that. Thank you for joining us.